You are tuned in to your weekly Sunday morning word broadcast, Rhema Power, with Reverend Ni Bernard Adiakwa, Senior Pastor of Powerhouse Ministries International, a program designed to improve your understanding into the Word of God, bring you practical solutions, and empower you to rise above life's daily challenges. Stay tuned. Hello, precious one. We wish to extend a warm invitation to you to join us for any of our Sunday services at the PMI King's Temple. Our services are specially designed to specifically meet your needs and draw you closer to have fellowship with God in His presence. You are welcome to join us in person at 6.15 a.m. for the morning glory service, at 7.30 a.m. for the second service, which is also streamed live across all our social media platforms, and at 9.45 a.m. for the third service. We also wish to invite you to join us for the Living Mana, a weekday Bible teaching service, which comes off every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and Thursday at 6.30 p.m. in person and online, respectively. On Fridays, we gather before our Father's altar at 6 p.m. to pray and seek His face for divine encounters. The King has a special place for you. Don't come alone. You surely will be blessed by the Word of God. In Jesus' name, God richly bless you. This morning, I come to you once again with the Word of God, which I believe is going to offer very practical solutions to life's daily challenges. I'm going to be speaking on stages and seasons. Turn your Bible with me to the book of Psalm 90, verse 12. Psalm 90, verse 12, it says, So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Teach us to number our days. We are speaking about transitions, the passage from one place or state to another. For example, the transition of the weather from hot to cold. That's a transition. The psalmist says, teach us to number our days so that we will apply our hearts to wisdom. What he's actually saying is that teach me to know the current stage of my life and how to behave myself appropriately as you give me your wisdom. Life is in stages. and Life goes through seasons. At every stage, you will need a certain appropriate behavior so that your life can progress according to to the will of God. It is important to locate the stage of life that you are in so that you will know how to apply your heart unto wisdom. If you are 10 years old, it is likely you are in a certain stage of your life. If you are 50 years old, you cannot behave the same way as a 10 year old. Behavior must change and improve as time goes on because you find yourself at different stages of your life. If you are unemployed, it's a stage when you are unemployed, there must be a transition with appropriate behavior according to the wisdom of God. Let's start by reading Genesis chapter 3, verse number 9. Genesis chapter 3, verses 9 to 10. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in thy garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself where are thou god is interacting with adam and eve after they have sinned adam and eve have run away and hidden themselves and god is asking where art thou this is a question of your location it is not a question that god doesn't know because he knows all things and he knows where they are but god wants you to answer so you can locate yourself where you are are you running to him or you are running away from him adam where are thou if somebody calls you and asks you where are you the first thing you start doing is to look around to locate yourself and find a landmark a major landmark by which you locate yourself it may be a building it may be a signboard but you want to find out where you are it gives you an idea of how far you have traveled and how far you have to travel to get to your destination where are you or your location has to locate with how you relate to something. For example, if you entered into a hotel, it is required to have an escape plan. And most hotel rooms will have a fire escape plan at the back of your door 
in a hotel room so that in a case of a fire you will know where you are and you will know where to go to be able to avoid an unpleasant experience god's questioning where are you is also a question of locating yourself in life for example who am i before god what does god want to do with my life what is god's will and purpose for my life and where exactly in god's will and purpose for my life if i've lived for 50 years what have i done with my life how far have i gone what choices have i made what relationships and actions have i taken where are you in your location has it taken you closer to god or has it made you run away from god's standard sometimes you might be happy with yourself other people may be happy with you but the question is god is asking where are you is that where god wants you to be are you in the right place you also ask yourself what have i done with my life who am i before god how close am i to my destination so where am i gives you an idea of your location your location may be spiritual your location may be financial your choices and decisions you have made may have brought you closer to your destination or further away but in your assessment you ask yourself where am i because it gives you an idea of your positioning so you can move into your future and maybe correct mistakes of your past or run closer let's look at genesis chapter 8 verse 22 Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. It says, While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. I'm going to use these two verses as a backdrop to speak about life transitions. Life is lived in stages and seasons. Where I am now, depends on how i have dealt with the stages and the seasons of my life in my natural growth i'm identified by age but am i also identified by the fruits of my life my achievements so if you are somebody growing up as a normal human being you will find out that you go through stages you are born a child but you grow you don't always remain a child you will become a young man and then you become an adult and then you grow up to become an old man various stages of life as a child we call that the learning stage of life where you need a lot of help you are dependent on other people your cry is constantly i need somebody to help me i cannot help myself as a child you need constant affirmation that you are nice you are beautiful and you are driven by convenience you keep constantly throwing tantrums and you are crying and looking up to others to solve problems for you when you are hungry you cry when you are you are you are hurt you cry when you need food you cry you always as a child are more inclined towards blaming others for what you you want you are more inclined to look for others to solve your problems for you it is also a learning stage where you learn a lot but you are a dependent you depend on other people for who you are it is a stage that is how you are born you grow through that stage it's a stage of life and there's a behavior that goes through it the bible says teach us to number our days what part of your life are you in are you in the childhood stage or have you grown up then there's the adolescent growing into adult stage in the adult stage it's a stage for living where you value what you are and you decide what you want to do with your life you take responsibility and you solve problems you are not just a dependent now other people depend on you you are focused on overcoming obstacles and you want your life to achieve something you now move into a stage of legacy and significance where you want to empower other people you are a master of your own life you've moved from competing with other people into completion and that is because you have grown from a child and transition through the various stages of life and you are now an adult so in life You've got to ask yourself, where am I? Am I at the childhood stage? Am I at the adolescent stage? Or am I at the adult stage? The stages of life are not necessarily chronological. So there are some people who may be old in years, but in their stage of life, they are still at a baby stage. They've never outgrown the baby stage. Even though they are physically older, they never get to solve their own problems. 
they are dependent on other people they always need to be pampered and reminded of their responsibilities some people may be old but they are also now finding themselves trapped in the adolescent stage they are now assertive they are adventurous and they are now discovering themselves they are very competitive and they pride in materialism but the bible tells us these are youthful lusts and at a certain stage you need to be able to flee from it are you at the mature stage where you are no longer dependent on other people you are no longer just discovering yourself but now you can take responsibility for your own life and you give life to others and you impact other lives sometimes the cry is i need help i need to achieve something i need to empower other people you may be an adult trapped in a childhood stage or you can also be a child like david who has stretched himself into the future and become an adult there are some people if nobody encourages them nothing gets done they remain children for life physically they are old but they are still at the childhood stage where are you adam it is important that we ask god to teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom look at david he was too young not yet enlisted into the army but he fights goliath and changes the destiny of a nation where are you in life sometimes you find very young people who have grown up overnight and are taking major decisions and responsibilities even for other people they are no longer children even though they may chronologically be young in age but they are facing adult responsibilities an elder for example is no longer competing he's now a reservoir of knowledge and experiences and he shapes the future by his past so he can guide others to avoid mistakes and the pitfalls of life how funny will it be if you saw an adult who wakes up in the morning picks a feeding bottle and begins to drink milk and sometimes you find out that somebody's old enough to marry but he's still in the child stage and he carries that child stage into his relationships and creates challenges for himself if you are not able to transition in life well you will find out that the cloud of glory has moved but you've been left behind physically you qualify but maturity wise and according to maturity and thinking and responsibilities you'll be left behind there are some people who are constantly eating without contribution they've been fed and fed and fed and have an entitlement mentality and as they grow up they forget that they must also now become responsible and provide for other people and so they take that into their relationships and create problems for themselves because they do not transition well those are the stages of life so you've got to locate yourself by the stage of life are you a child are you an adolescent are you an adult are you mature these are various stages of life that you need to understand who you are now when we're in school i'm sure all of us remember the bell that was rung so that we would change lessons if you're in a math class and the bell rang you knew that you had to move maybe to the chemistry class or to the geography class if you didn't move at the indication of the sound of the bell everybody else will move and you'll be left behind and you'll have unpleasant experiences that is how life is there are stages at which you need to transition you will need to change you will need to move on and if you don't you are still a human being a good person but you find out that the cloud has moved and you are left behind and the egyptians are about to catch you happy anniversary to powerhouse 25 years of power of god's grace of god's mercy of god's goodness and my heartiest congratulations to you pastor bernard and uh, your wife pastor mansa and the whole team uh, who stand with you pastors men and women of god who have stood faithful with you all through these years you have chosen a very hard ground a very difficult place to plow for the lord and to create a vineyard for him and and God has helped you in the hard place in a difficult place where most people would not plow you have plowed and see the results in the lives of the transformed people that God has raised all around you 
Uh, for me, uh, I have seen the transformation of Powerhouse all these years. I came when the church was a small congregation, didn't have a nice meeting place, and I've seen every year improvement, advancement, quality, excellence. In a place where the surroundings seem depressing, you have built an edifice of excellence and a people who have become models of excellence, cities set on a hill, a light of God that is not under a bushel. And your life and ministry makes all of us fully appreciate the transforming power of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And these 25 years have been laborers, but the fruit is there to see in the lives that have been transformed. And we trust God that he who has brought you these 25 years is going to take you the next 25 years, by which time you'll be an old man and an old woman, but uh, the church of Jesus Christ will be ever young and ever strong, still plowing for the Lord Jesus Christ. You make us proud. You honor the name of the Lord. You have remained faithful. May the Lord expand your coast and may the Lord cause the days ahead to be like the days of the heavens above. May God bless you, increase you, and abound in grace towards you in all good things. In Jesus' name, amen. In Genesis chapter 8, after Noah has come out of the ark, God says, I will never again curse the earth for man's sake. As long as the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, day and night shall not cease. So one of the things that we also deal with in life are what I call seasons. Apart from the stages of life, you also have to understand the seasons of life. God says, as long as the earth remaineth, there'll be seed time and there'll be harvest. There'll be cold and there'll be heat. There'll be day and there'll be night, and it shall not cease. Seasons are cyclical. For example, there'll be seed time. What is seed time? It's a time of sacrifice and investment. It's a time of giving up when you have to let things go. Giving and putting something into the ground or an investment, digging deep to invest. You let go of your time. You let go of your efforts. You let go of your energy. Why? Because it is seed time. Everybody will have a seed time in your life. And if you miss the seed time, then you jeopardize your future and your harvest. It is not because you are a bad person, but what you should be doing at seed time, it's a time for sowing you didn't do it. So, for example, if you was going to school at a particular time, and you missed that time, and you decided to go to school later, a good person but obviously you have missed your time you are going to have challenges when would you graduate and begin to compete with your colleagues for a job because there's an age limit so it's a seed time at which certain things are expected of you then there'll be harvest time it's a time of fruits it's a time of reward it's a time of growth when seeds sown germinate and they produce fruit the harvest is a time where you think of great work and strategy you apply your skills you now begin to work hard to harvest what you have reaped. Now remember, the skill set for sowing is also very different from the skill set for harvesting. Then there is cold or winter. It's a season of loneliness. It's a season of dryness. When you feel dry and rejected, but it's also a time of moisture. When the winter time provides water for your seeds that you have planted, you have to go through it. In those times, it may seem as if nothing is working. Everything around you may seem to be dry. There's severe cold and the trees are shedding their leaves and literally die. But you are not in a bad place. Everybody will go through a period of cold time and winter time. You are not in a bad place. The leaves might fall off, but the roots are not dead. It is just a season. And every season is meant to work out something in your life. And so when God asks Adam, where are you? You also have to locate yourself in the season of your life. Are you in the seed time? Are you in the harvest time? Are you in the cold time? Are you in the dry time? What season of your life? Are you in summer? Are you in day? Or are you in night? No matter where you are, you've got to find out. It is a season. 
I am not necessarily in a wrong place. I am just in a cold season. It may seem as if the trees, the leaves are falling off and everything is dead. But it's a season. My root is not dead. Summer is a time of warmth. It's a time of joy. Where everything seems bright and you are embraced by everybody. Now these seasons come in multiples. You can be in harvest and also be in a cold time. You can be lonely and be dry. You can be going through summer and also going through a period of cold times in your life. Even though you have loss of harvest, seasons don't come one by one. They come in permutations. So you can have harvest and cold. You can have sea time and also have winter time. You can have sea time and have night time or day time. Big things may be taking place, but nobody sees. You have powerful ideas, but you are still in the winter of your life. And no one seems to appreciate you. Where are you? It is important you understand the stage of your life and also the season of your life. The Bible talks about the sons of Issachar who had understanding of the times and the seasons of their life. It is important for you to locate where you are lest you become impatient and you try to force yourself into another season and do negative things that may derail your life. So there's a season when you are sowing and you are not reaping. If you don't understand the seasons, you may be in a hurry to harvest and you may be led into maybe taking what doesn't belong to you or what is another man's harvest. When you are working for somebody else as your season and another person is reaping, that is not your reaping time. That may be your sowing time and your attitude and your behavior must not be derailed by somebody's harvest. Whilst you may be sowing, another person may be in harvest. Whilst you may be weeping, somebody is getting married. Whilst you may be going through mourning, another person may be going through another season of his or her life. So we may all be going through different seasons at a different time. I am over 50 years old. Somebody is now 10 years old. We are all not going to go through the same seasons. I need to know where I am so that I may apply my heart unto wisdom. Embrace the seasons of life. Look at Jesus Christ. He spent 30 years of his life in obscurity. Even at the age of 12, he knew who he was. He had started answering questions in the temple. Everybody knew that this guy was going to be somebody great. But he had to go through a season and stay under for 30 years. And then eventually, at the right time, come out for three years of ministry. You may know that you are better than the priests in the temple, yet it is not your time. You want to be in the light, but there is something else you have to build up, the capacity and your character, so that when the light exposes you, your enemies who are waiting for you will not be able to overcome you because you've grown in character and in courage. You know your season. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Turn your Bible with me quickly to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse number 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Get your family together. Open your Bible together. Let's read out the scriptures and create faith into our lives. Let's read it together. One to go. When I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, not if, when I became a man, I put away childish things. So in this verse, we see the transition from childhood to adulthood or to manhood. Paul says, when I was a child. So I was a child. I didn't remain a child forever. It was a stage in my life. When I was a child, I speak as a child. It means that there's a speech of a child which you cannot go beyond childhood stage. When you are a child, there's a language that will be excused. But at another stage in a boardroom, you cannot take child language into the boardroom. And you need to be able to transition. Some people never transition well through life. When I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child, my thinking, my understanding was shaped by the season and the stage of my life. But he says, but when? Because everybody is expected to grow. When I became a man, 
you've got to realize that it is a stage you will enter into you may be a child today but you will definitely grow up to become a man you may be a young man today but the responsibilities will be waiting for you and so you start preparing yourself for the next season of your life you may be a young man you may be unemployed you've got to prepare yourself for when you get a job you may be single today the next stage of your life as you are praying is to be married you've got to prepare yourself and put away some things because as people transition one of the things is to put on new habits to reflect the new times and the seasons and to put off and to put away childish things you cannot carry childish things into your adult stage there are things you leave behind for example life will present various stages and seasons and each one of them will place a demand on you to transition from a child to an adolescent to an adult stage children wear pampas adolescents don't wear pampas adults don't wear pampas children dress in a certain way behave in a certain way eat in a certain way but as you transition it is expected that you will put away childish thoughts so the question is not how old you are but are you transitioning well that is how it is also with the seasons it is hot today it is cold tomorrow it is rainy today it is not raining tomorrow it is sowing time today it is harvest time tomorrow it is cold today it is hot tomorrow how do you prepare anticipate the next stage of your life so you can transition into that season the bell is ringing to change lessons of your life the physical signs are showing you that you need to put away certain childish thoughts i want to just look at four things about transitions number one seasons and times are predetermined you don't determine them yours is to search and behave appropriately and to utilize the season so whether you like it spring will come summer will come you don't determine it these are predetermined you will grow up to become an older person you will grow up and meet the responsibilities of life you do not determine it you prepare for the seasons the second thing you should know about seasons is that seasons don't last forever they alternate and so you live through them it may be cold but day time you need to understand the permutations of the various seasons it may also be cold and harvest time so you need to understand that the seasons are cyclical they don't last forever they alternate so today you are going through summer it will not last forever summer will be over and spring will come you are going through winter winter will not last forever winter will be over spring will come you are going through a dark period the darkness will not last forever day will surely break and joy will come in the morning you've got to go through life with a hope of the seasons that will change and prepare yourself for it don't be frozen in a season and don't prolong a season of your life with bad choices and bad mistakes number three in all seasons there are opportunities and threats no season is better than the other winter is not better than summer and spring is not better than autumn there are opportunities for every season and threats for every season i know that we we say that the good old days but the days ahead are better we have more fun we are improving our lives daily we are now more independent we can do things better than in the past you see you've got to understand every season will bring opportunities and threats if you are married there'll be opportunities and threats if you are single there'll be opportunities and threats if you are pregnant there'll be opportunities and threats if you are growing up there'll be opportunities and threats the opportunity to have more wealth or the opportunity also to die early these are all things that come with seasons you will never be on a mountain permanently behind every mountain it's a valley and you have to learn how to work with all these things at your age and understand the seasons wherever you find yourself the biggest challenge is when seasons change but you don't know how to transition to the next stage of your life and the fourth thing to know about seasons is that seasons impose demands and lifestyles on you i am not lost it may be a dark season but i am not lost it may be a dark season i may be in jail i may be going through a bad experience but i'm not lost it will impose some demands and lifestyle may the lord give us wisdom to number our days and to apply our hearts unto wisdom we'll continue next week put your hands together for the lord good morning. 
Hello precious one, we wish to extend a warm invitation to you to join us for any of our Sunday services at the PMI King's Temple. Our services are specially designed to specifically meet your needs and draw you closer to have fellowship with God in His presence. You are welcome to join us in person at 6.15 a.m. for the morning glory service, at 7.30 a.m. for the second service, which is also streamed live across all our social media platforms, and at 9.45 a.m. for the third service. We also wish to invite you to join us for the Living Mana, our weekday Bible teaching service, which comes off every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and Thursday at 6.30 p.m. in person and online, respectively. On Fridays, we gather before our Father's altar at 6 p.m. to pray and seek His face for divine encounters. The King has a special place for you. Don't come alone. You surely will be blessed by the Word of God. In Jesus' name, God richly bless you. Thank you for listening to Rhema Power with Reverend Me Bernard Adiakwa. We hope you've been blessed. For further information, contact 0303-931-841. Tune in next week for another insightful teaching on Rhema Power.